very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. This time round we're talking matters FC Leopard's election slated for next month on 23rd. And of course joining me is former uh, defender for both uh, club and country FC Leopard's and Kenya respectively, Dan Shikanda. A very good afternoon, son. Good to speak to you. How have you been? I've been okay. Nice to be here with you. And I'm uh, looking forward to a good discussion on Definitely. matters FC Leopards. Matters FC Leopards and general uh, state of Kenyan football. I know you are on the ballot as far as the chairmanship of FC Leopards is concerned in the polls you marked for next month. What might have informed the decision? Uh, first and foremost, um, I'm actually looking forward to be on the ballot. Although today I was called by some of my supporters and they told me, we understand your name is not uh, on the list of uh, members for 2017. And for you to vie, you need to, be, to have been a member for three consecutive years. That is 2017, 2018, and, 20, and 2019. But I would like to calm them down. Uh, I am a paid up member of AFC Leopards from in fact 2016. So I'll just confirm, I, I'll confirm to them that I paid 2017, 2018, and 2019. So I'm looking forward to be on the ballot and maybe to answer your question, what informed me? Uh, the club has not been performing well, FC, and it's one of the biggest clubs in this region. Not in this country, in this region. In fact, one, in the region in the sense that FC maybe could be rivaling uh, Simba for big, for, 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 club, for, for the, the, the leading club in this region. We have our brothers, Gormaya, Yes, they've achieved a lot, but they're not bigger than FC. So a lot of people have actually been, been talking to us and telling us, why did you guys leave the club? And now you see people are coming in, they're messing up the club, going. So why don't you guys go and uh, try and help FC? 2017, I vied for governorship of Nairobi. I was uh, deputizing Peter Kenneth. And each place we went to, FC Leopards members and fans were on my case. Why have we left FC today? And that really informed me a lot. So when um, there was a coup uh, beginning of l last year, before the league just began, some members actually had, uh, they, they, they came, they held a press conference that they've done a coup and they're taking over the leadership of FC. That is when one of our senior members called us. Uh, Masiga and asked us, he's, been asked, he's being asked so many questions about, about Leopards. What do we think as former players? What can we do? How can we help this club? And from our discussion, most of them were done. We need to support you because we know you have what it takes maybe to run a full campaign and maybe win these elections and we fix the club first as legends too, as members of uh, FC Leopards. And I know there has been much outcry uh, from members of the public and even from former players themselves that it's high time one of them uh, can be in charge of, you know, uh, administrative part of uh, Kenyan football, both club and even national team level, and even at the federational level. Did it also contribute immensely towards your bid? Yes, because when uh, George Ware was elected president, of the Republic of uh, Liberia, of course, a lot of us were, were very happy. And if a former player can actually rise to the level of presidency, and we are really looking forward for him doing a good job, we were asking ourselves, why do we leave football to be messed by people who have not been part and parcel of the struggle, part and parcel of the game? Uh, I'm not saying that if elected as, uh, as footballers, maybe we'll make a big difference. I think we are the right people to be there because we have been there playing. We are the ones who've been wearing the shoe and we know where the shoe pinches most. For example, if you take FC as a case, as a case study, this club has been changing coaches year in, year out. For example, for the last three years, uh, statistics show that they've had 27 coaches. Players have really been, there's been a high turnover of players. There's no way you can build a football team without consistency. Whether you have 11 messes on the pitch and each day you are changing coaches and you are changing uh, the environment, definitely you will not get a result. So I believe it is a high time, some of us, and not football alone, 
I'm talking in, in terms of, in fact, all sports cutting across board that the people who are there, the people who have played the game, should actually come back and say, we want to run our game. We've seen it's now happening in athletics. They're actually taking uh, charge of their sport. And we are looking forward for footballers to take charge of their sport. We want to start with the club. And I'm sure once elected, what I'll do, it will inform so much the country and the community what needs to be done in a football club. And I know as a candidate, you've got your blueprint or manifesto. What does it revolve around? What do you seek to do for the club in case elected the chairman of FC Leopards? What's your ambition? And My ambition is simple. First and foremost, fix the playing unit. The playing unit is the biggest asset that any club, any football club could have. But I think our playing unit has been neglected by the officials who've been there. Not only this office, but even in the past office. When I, play, I was playing for FC, we had very committed officials, the likes of Alfred Sambu, the likes of uh, Wamusamia, Wafula Wamusamia. Uh, these people were committed with the playing unit. We have seen of late the playing unit whereby uh, the, the players are always in the press. Allowance is not paid. Salary is not paid. Uh, basics have not been catered for. For you to make a football team, to give it a better environment to get results, you actually need to have uh, a playing unit that is satisfied that all its basic needs are being met. So my focus, and having been a former player, I know once I get it right on the playing unit, that will be the platform and the fuel to bring changes in Leopards. Leopards, as we speak, I can tell you without fear of any contradiction, Leopard is 20 years behind, 20 years behind schedule because we train at KTTC. Yes. I am sure KTTC was not there in 1964. Leopard was formed in 1964. Yes. KTTC, as an education institution, has all the facilities that appertains to education. If you look at Leopards, they don't have any facility that appertains to football. They don't have a clubhouse, they don't have a training pitch, they don't have the stadium, they don't have anything. They're just living hand to mouth. I am not saying if elected in the next three months, they will have all this. But I'm saying if elected, one, we have to work on the, we have to work on the governance structure. Governance structure has really been letting down AFC Leopards. And that's why anybody thinks that they can walk into AFC because I have some money, let me go to AFC use it as, as a stepping stone because I'm not known. Once I go to FC, I will be known. Then after that, I'll go to other ventures. No. We want to put in an infrastructure of football so that if your mind, your soul, and your spirit is not football, is other things, you don't come to FC. You don't pass through FC going elsewhere. We want anyone coming to FC to be focused on the core business, which is football. FC is the biggest club in this region. When you go out, out there, you will be told this is the club that eliminated Asante Kotoko in, uh, in 1985, when Asante Kotoko was the king of Africa. And no one knew that in East Africa people play football. So in a nutshell, I want to come in, fix the playing unit, first and foremost, because for you to play for FC Leopard, you must be the best player in this region, in Africa. When I was playing football, when I was playing for FC Leopards, I was the best number 11 in this country, in this region. Because we played with teams from Uganda, Tanzania, we played with teams from East Africa. We used to beat them. And when you're talking about FC Leopards, and then you start comparing, uh, I'm seeing nowadays people compare FC with the sofa packers of this one, with <laughs> and Tasca. Kenya Breweries, Tasca, with Madare. That is a misnomer. AFC is bigger than this team. So what these teams can achieve, AFC should be achieving 10 times more than that. So that is what we want to instill and bring into AFC because the leadership which has been there does not know what AFC is all about. For example, we are going to play Sony tomorrow. That is a replay which was not played because when we went to Sony, they were not prepared to host AFC. But somebody somewhere who organizes the league thinks that because they did not follow the rule, they're supposed to be given a second opportunity. No. You're not supposed... If we have come up with rules, we have to follow those rules. So I feel FC Leopard's officials never put their foot down to show these people that 
us as FC, we did our role. So the rest is yours. So I am looking forward to becoming the FC chairman and building a team first on the pitch, which will play the best football in this country and win trophy. trophies. FC was formed to win trophies. And by winning Nothing those else. trophies, it will bring the community together and the country. I understand there is another a former international who is contesting for the same seat, uh, the same way you are doing, that is Bonfas Ambani. There has been also concern that why don't these former internationals have some sort of solidarity and uh, gang up efforts together against a common enemy? Is, 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 are you divided? I don't think as legends we are divided because I'm talking on behalf of legends. And uh, we are having a meeting tomorrow which will make a lot of decisions. Uh, going forward, you see, my brother Ambani insists that, uh, you know, Shikanda is a politician, so he should not move anywhere near the club. <laughs> Any elective position is politics. And in fact, life is politics. When you are born and you cried, that was the first protest, yeah, where you are saying, you have brought me to an environment where now I have to fight for myself. When you're fighting for yourself, you have to make sure that you get the best. So, yes, Boniface is actually vying, he's saying he's vying. Uh, some decisions will be made by, uh, by legends tomorrow. We are having a meeting tomorrow at 2.30. But it is anyone's democratic right actually to vie for any seat. And I am happy because uh, long time ago, no former footballer was actually offering themselves to buy. And it will be interesting. And I know being a political process, and some of us have gone through many political processes, I am well prepared actually to wrestle uh, the leadership of Leopards and take it to former players, the legends. And now we stand to be counted that yes, we fought for this. What can we do first for the players? then second for the club, then third for the community and the country. Because I wonder a lot when I see this country still treating sports as a pastime. I don't know if you're getting my point. Yes, I'm getting This country does not treat sports as an industry. As sports is never given a priority. Sport is never given a priority. And that's why Maybe it can sound political if I say the next statement. That's why you <laughs> see, like ministry, ministry of sports. Yes. It comes like maybe a, a, a last thought. Who is running the ministry of sport? Who is actually in charge of sport in that country? It pains when our parents still have that notion that do not play football, go and read. Reading is important. I have gone to school. I know the importance of school. You are a doctor, but, right? Yes. <laughs> but I can assure you, football is bigger than even medicine, law, everything. If we get our right, uh, if we get our, our, our right act structures right, structures in place. We just get our act right, and then after getting our act correct right and put structures in place, we will actually produce more professional players than producing more criminals and thugs the way we are doing. Because there are no opportunities. Once there are no opportunities, the top minds start thinking of how to survive. And that's why you find you're generating criminals. Football can help. And I can assure you, if we can get it right in football, somehow we are getting it right in athletics. But I still believe more can be done. Can be done. You've seen the kind of uh, athletes we've produced. Yes. We can equally produce world beaters in football. And a good example is, of, is uh, uh, our torch bearer, uh, uh, our flag bearer, uh, Wanyama. You can see he's actually in Champions League final competing that at the topest level, at the topmost level in football. And we have many players of his caliber. We have many players good players in this country, if we can just put our structures right. And I don't want to fault the federation. It all starts with the clubs, the federation, and the government. These three arms must make sure they do the right thing. And this time round, we are offering ourselves 
for elective positions in our club FC Leopards so that we can do something at Leopards which other clubs can borrow, do something. Then now we pass the responsibility, the baton, to the federation, which again will pass the, uh, the baton or the responsibility to the government. That is how we can build football. Because I am surprised when we hear of all these academies and then AFC Leopards and Gormaya do not have academies. And they're the top most footballers. Uh, they're the top most clubs in the country. So who are these running academies when and AFC and Gor do not have? And Mr. Shikanda, some questions are uh, trickling in through via our social media handles. That's on Twitter. And someone is asking that, you know, uh, there have been interest from uh, several people who want to run for the office as far as management and administration of uh, club football and even national team level is concerned. But they don't have the interest of the sport at heart uh, for you is asking for you are you genuinely interested in this particular position to spur the team to another level and probably help it address its concerns grievances or probably you want to use it as a platform to something else like politics just like you indicated earlier that you know everything is political thank you i am interested i'm a product of football i am dan Sh dr dan shikanda today because football educated me from form two my parents never paid any school fees to the university. My football has educated my siblings. Four of my siblings have been educated through my football. So I am a product of football, and I know what I'm talking about. Most people, let, let me demystify that, uh, the political thing. Most politicians use football as a stepping stone for their name recognition. Somebody comes, he is not known. For example, Maxwell Wasike. You go somewhere we are not known. You start now using football platform to make sure that people know you. They use football for name recognition. Where I sit now, I have been in politics without using football as a stepping stone. So today, if I'm elected chairman of AFC Leopards, it is not that people do not know me so that they will know me through chairmanship of AFC Leopards. I vied for governor in Nairobi. I vied for an M as an MP in Nairobi and gone to the ballot. I have played football to the highest level in this country and outside this country. So anyone who does not know me will not be in a position even to vote for anything. So I am already known. So I'm not coming to use leopards as a stepping stone for any political seat because I'll be duplicating things then. Because I, am already, I have already vied for governorship in Nairobi. So why didn't I use leopards then? I am coming to Leopards because of the pain we feel when people mismanage a club of Leopards status. Football is simple. Football management is simple. I have been a manager for the last 15 years. Now I'm in consultancy and I'm working with one of the biggest companies in the world as a consultant. Football, the basic thing about football is the playing unit. Get it right? If you look at Barcelona or look at Liverpool or look at all the big clubs, they focus on getting the right players. People come into football, the so-called the ones who you want to use football to get to other means. They don't know what ingredients are supposed to be in place for you to make a team. So they just come. They shoot in the dark. Yes. They're elected. They're in office. They don't know what to do. They end up messing a brand the way AFC Leopard's brand has been missed. So I am coming into AFC. First and foremost, I will not promise big things. I am promising the AFC fraternity. We want to build a playing unit which can compete and win championship. Which, not which can participate, because yes. Leopard's has been participating. Last year they were seventh. This year we will be, we will be at about top eight or top ten. We have actually just survived going to relegation because at some point we put our foot down. Let's do things uh, in a right manner so that we get results. So it's not about, you know, so many people out there, anyone doing something, people look at the negative, the, the, the flip side of things. But I am coming to Leopards to actually put in a structure, and I'm not alone. I am with serious minds like JJ Masiga, like Peter Ouma, like uh, Maurice Hayota. John Busolo, key people who have actually built this brand of AFC Leopard. Now, what we just want to do, we have our legacies we've left in the club. For example, I have won three titles with AFC Leopards. So coming to win the league to me 
that is not a legacy I will leave. If next year we win the league, and we must, we are coming up with a project of 72 plus one points for next year to win the league. It will not be a legacy for me because I've already won the league. Yes. My legacy is to do things differently and leave something which any other official, any other office never left. So I'm in this for the purposes of putting Leopards back to where it belonged. As we speak right now, there is a club as far as National Super League is concerned. It's called Wazito FC. It's making headlines positively uh, because the new owner has you know, made uh, several strides, even acquisition of the bus, and their games are being televised live. And like Gurmaya and FC Leopards, you know, the traditional clubs that enjoy huge fan base, even the stadium itself is not in place. In terms of ensuring that even infrastructural uh, capacity of FC Leopards is well addressed, how do you seek to go about it? Simple. And I like the example you've given us of uh, Wazito. I don't want to be a prophet of doom, but let me just give you my thoughts. Yes. 20 years down the line, maybe we'll not have Wazito. 20 years down the line, and I'll give you reasons. But 20 years down the line, we'll still have FC and Gormaya. I don't want 20 years down the line, FC to be in this state, and 20 years down the line, we have a team, there was a team called Wazito, both buses did this, but now it's not there. We are coming into AFC, not as Dan Shikanda, as a group of serious professionals who've gone through football. And we know that this club is behind schedule. This club actually needs some uh, structures in place to be a complete football club. It is embarrassing and it is actually annoying to be in the 21st century and yet a big club like FC do not have, not a stadium, just a playing, just a training ground. Training ground in the middle of nowhere, just buy a small piece of land, put goals, this side and this side, then this is our playing ground. This is our training ground. Not even a stadium, a training ground. We are coming in to make sure that after the three years, somebody will say Dan Shikanda and company and team did something. You're not coming in just to be part of the statistics that we were officials. I have told you as a player, I won the league with the FC three times. And I can assure you as an official, my uh, target or my objective, yes, uh, my primary objective is to win the league, but my secondary objective and the rest and tertiary is to make sure that there is an infrastructure in AFC Leopard, that anyone who comes after me will actually see there are people who did something here. Besides, you know, addressing the welfare of playing units and uh, that of technical bench, and the FC Leopards has been associated with plenty of shortcomings. You know, you've also mentioned some aspect of changing of players and inconsistency being one of the reasons that has contributed towards, you know, downfall of the club. The standards have drastically dwindled. What else do you think have been the flaws of the club? you vehemently support the serious flaws of the club is that the leadership of the club did most of the people have come into little leopards they did not know what to do for example uh technical bench you've mentioned technical bench you see the notion out here and even the people who will be vying against me think that technical bench is coach and maybe assistant coach and team manager that's very far from the truth Technical bench, when you're actually building a team which has to go out and compete, you must be aware of your opponents. I have been in FC as a rescue member and interacted with players, asked them about their opponents, asked them about a number of issues uh, about our football and our participation in the league. And I realized most of our players know themselves, but they don't know their opponent. I've also interacted with the, uh, with the technical bench about we are going to play, for example, we are playing Sony tomorrow. Yes. Sony played on Thursday against KCB. If I was chairman of AFC today and we were to go and play Sony, I could have, have, I could have had my technical members, not necessarily my coach and my assistant coach, other two, two or three members traveling to Awendo to go and see who this son is, who is the keeper, who is, yeah, 
do a reke. They go on a spy mission. Then as we prepare for that team, we actually know they get their goals from here. This is how they defend. So when you're going to play them, you are a complete, you're completely prepared. Our letdown or our mis, uh, mishap, uh, mishappening has been we do not prepare adequately for our matches. Preparing for a match is not just preparing your team. Yes. It's also knowing what your opponent is doing, his strength and his weaknesses. You must have swords for both. Your, your sword, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, and also their sword. So that by the time you're playing them, you know where they're most vulnerable and you take advantage of that, number one. Number two, we come, all the officers I've seen in FC Leopards, and I don't know whether my managerial skills are different from others. People start their league, their season, without even a budget. <laughs> so now you start depending on Nungu's idea, Nyasaya Khonya. In Kenya, we say that. If God does not help you, then you are done. God helps those who help themselves first. I have, where I've worked through, we never start a season without a budget. Even as I sit here, I actually know my rough budget for next season. And I usually have interacted a lot with these players. And I tell them, next season I'll be paying you. When, once you win a match for me, before that sweat dries, I'll have paid you a win allowance. Because that's the way. That's how to show people I am, we are serious as an office. Are you serious as a playing unit? We want them to have different opportunities. We want to train them on life skills so that they know whatever they are doing now will have repercussion in their life in future. For example, I sat an interview in South Africa and somebody on the panel knew me through football 30 years down the line. So it is key they should know whatever they are doing now, playing football, they should not think they are passing time. It is a key ingredient of their future. And most people come in. For example, now I'm looking at the social media, what people are saying they will do. You can't do all those things without fixing the playing unit. These are people we've been together in rescue team and others have been uh, like uh, coaches for the junior team. But they have not talked to any player of AFC Leopards for the last one year. And now you're offering yourself to be chairman. And these players of AFC, who are supposed to be your sons, you have never even spared a minute to talk to them for a whole year. What makes you think that once elected, now you will be talking to these guys? You won't have time for them. Yes, definitely. You, you will start thinking now, I'm AFC chairman, Supersport is giving us 52 million. Now, this 52 million, maybe the club, ah, yeah, these are just people for football. And if you don't know, I should give them this and this other one. You will go wrong. And, and while talking about the financial aspect of the team, several scenarios have been witnessed before AFC Leopards and even Gourmet Football Club, top clubs locally, have you know, resorted to approaching politicians for handouts. When you get elected, will there be self-sustaining programs that, you know, make the team be self-reliant upon itself rather than, you know, resorting to such situations? You see, I'm looking at the social media and people are saying, we need a chairman who has money. Financial muscle. Financial muscle. <laughs> Any chairman elected with financial muscle is coming to kill the team. Why? Because we need, if I give you a fish, you won't know how to fish. But if I train you how to fish, you'll eat for the rest of your life. Leopards need to generate its own money. Leopards is a serious gold mine, serious gold mine. And I can assure you, once elected chairman for Leopards, yes. my first goal will be to build a, un a, a winning unit, which as we speak, some people have been engaged. We need about six players to add to what we have so that we can win our matches on the pitch. Once we start winning our matches on the pitch, I have told you we need a budget for next year. 
I trust in God that we still have the sponsorship for Super Sport, uh, for Sports Pesa. I've been reading that uh, some things are happening, but I trust God that Sports Pesa will still be our sponsorship. Hence, our sponsor, hence, there will be 52 million for FC. As an office, we have to come with measures to raise another 48 million because my budget for next year for FC is 100 million. We have to come in with measures to actually raise 48 million. I am surprised that somebody, people have been running AFC Leopards without resource mobilization departments. Even serious corporates do marketing so that at the end of the day, they can bring in more uh, business and raise money. I am surprised AFC Leopards does not market the brand. Coca-Cola, to date, markets Coca-Cola. Unlike FC Leopards. Unlike FC Leopards, where everybody sits, good for us all, expect money to come from uh, above, and then when you're stuck, definitely, you'll run to politicians. <laughs> Dan I, went, I went to Lusaka personally yes. the other day, and I know a lot of questions are being asked. I went to Lusaka because we had to hone our matches. The 52 million that Supersport is giving us with the crash program we have has not been enough to see the club honor its obligations. And I went to Lusaka. Lusaka gave us 950,000 to pay some allowances, to take the team to Western for two matches, and also to honor the Bandari match. But I can assure the football fraternity, the AFC Leopard uh, fraternity, that come next year, those will be things of the past. Because Leopards must generate their own revenue. It is unfortunate we are going for an election and we are paying membership to vote. Membership for heaven's sake should be a revenue generation generating exercise. It, is, it, is, it should not be tied to an election. So when you tie it to an election, you end up having 1,200 members going to vote. And like tying it to generating revenue for the club so that it can perform well, you'll have 10,000 members, 100,000 members. And mark my words, when elected, I will come back here after my three years. We will not have less than 100,000 members who are paying 1,000 shillings. Looking forward to that. And as we wind up, of course, we're going to speak a little bit about state of Kenyan football. Uh, as far as Matters National Team is concerned, the Rambe Stars has qualified to African Cup of Nations. After 15 years of waiting, they will be participating in that continental show piece slated for Egypt next month. And I know you also played for the national team yeah. as well, uh, apart from featuring for local club FC Leopards. What do you make of the strides that have been achieved as far as uh, administration and management of football locally? So far, so good. And I'm one of the people in this country who actually faced Nyamwea and told Nyamwea he's doing a lot of nothing in Kenyan football. We were criticized, we were abused, we were told everything by even some of our former players because Nyamwea was taking care of them. You see, football, you need actually to prepare. There's no shortcut in football. And I'm happy that the Federation has done something, but there's a lot which needs to be done. The difference between Nick Mwendo's federation and Nyamwea's federation, the FIFA friendly, the FIFA windows, Nick, Mwaya, uh, Nick Mwendo's well taken care of. federation has used them well for purposes of improving our football. The other regime was using them for purposes of making money for a few people. There's something happening in our football. A lot can still be done, but now there's some light at the end of the tunnel. I'm not saying they've done everything well, yeah? No, I'm not saying that. But they have done something. A lot of people will say, if Sierra Leone never pulled out, we could not have gone. How many teams were we in that pool? Three. We were four. Sierra Leone pulled out. Two of us have gone. Kenya so, and Ghana. Kenya and Ghana. Ethiopia has not gone. So, if we had not done our, our homework right, Ethiopia could have gone instead of us. So give credit to the Federation. I actually vied against them. As a vice president? As a vice president. But I can today say that they have done something positive, which was never done before. But they still have a lot to do, which I believe 
if they listen to people's uh, advices and, 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 and other voice of reason, they will do that. We are going to the cup of nation, not as, uh, 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 as challengers, I can say that. But we shall learn something from there. I'm hoping we will prepare well so that we are not the weeping boys. But all said and done, whatever results we get, we can build on that. And that is the beauty about a federation which focuses on doing uh, matters football than a federation which focuses, um, Shikanda is the chairman, I need to make as much money as I can, so I'll uh, organize a friendly with a team which will beat us, moves up, up in the rank, but Shikanda makes some money and life continues. That's what has been happening in our Kenyan football, even at club level, at national team level, and even down there in the grassroots. I hope a lot will change so that we can tap talent down there. We don't lose, we are losing our best players to crime, to sicknesses, to matatu industry, and other things. Then we don't have the best coming through the way athletics is doing. Athletics are actually getting 80% of their best. We are getting less than 10% of our best coming to the national, uh, to the national platform, national level. Finally, as we wind up, of course, I know FC Leopards fans are watching. What are the eligibility requirements that uh, you know, one has to possess for him or her to, to be uh, entitled for voting process? Uh, it's unfortunate that a few members will actually participate in the election. To me, that is not wrong. Why are you not majority? Yeah, uh, I'm saying that to me that is not wrong because the club has been there. And everybody who has been close to the club knew that these are the requirements. You have to be a paid up member for two consecutive seasons for you actually to vote. Number one. Reason for that, uh, and, uh, for you to vote. Number, number two, uh, for you to vie, you must have been a, 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 a paid up member and you're paying a thousand per year for th three consecutive years. That is 2017, 2018, 2019. For you to vote, you must be a paid up member that 1,000 shillings for 2018 and 2019. The reason why they put that, which to me was very logical and right. People used to wait for el elections and go and ferry everybody, all the mamambogas and bring them to vote. This mamamboga does not know what she's voting for. But because she's been given some money, she will come and elect Dan Shikanda. Because Dan Shikanda has given us some money, then goes. Dan Shikanda does not know AFC problems. The people who know AFC problems have voted for you. But because there are few, those who come to the stadium, they've been outnumbered by those who don't come, who have just been ferried. Now the club starts suffering. For example, we are going for elections on the 23rd. And I hope no lawyer will go to court <laughs> to actually stop that election. The members participating have actually been following the team for the last two years. The members not participating, they have not been following the team for the last two years. Because if they were following the team, they could have known the, uh, the criteria for eligibility. The members going to vie, for example, we've talked about people using football as a stepping stone. If these rules were not there, I am sure some people who want to vie governor in Western could have come to vie in AFC Leopards. Then when they're coming to vie, they don't know anything about football. But because they're deep-pocketed, they will just pour money and they'll get elected. After that, they abscond the club. They abscond their responsibility, they leave the club suffering. So what is in place is the correct measure. The people who are going to vie, who are going to be allowed to actually vie, have been following the team for the last three years. So they're just not coming in because it is an election and I want to be governor in Kakamega or Busia or Nairobi or where, now I'm coming to vie. No. They have been following the club. And it, now it is their right to make decisions. Always a pleasure speaking to you, Dan Shikanda, former international, joining us on the touchline this particular afternoon on Y254 to give his perspective with regards to his ambition and bid for FC Leopard's uh, chairmanship election slated for next month on 23rd. He's one of the candidates who is uh, looking forward to be elected, of course, alongside Bonfa Sambani, who has also offered himself to vie for the chairmanship of the club, alongside Maurice Amawa, prominent businessman.
based at the cost. But Dan is hopeful and optimistic that he will get elected and restore the lost glory of the club. This is the touchline on Y254. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Of course, coming up next is the fans on where we're giving a focus on international football with regards to what happened as far as UEFA Champions League and Europa League is concerned. But before that, let's uh, take a look at the highlights of what happened on both Tuesday and Wednesday nights.